Hello, thank you very much for joining us. This is the Conrado Show, where we discuss issues of purpose, passion, and power. On this show, you are very much welcome anytime to help you, you through development processes that will establish you in order for you to know what exactly God created you on this earth for. And then also, when you understand that, what kind of passion do you need in order for you to go through life and achieve your purpose? And then the power that God has deposited in you, how can you harness it to achieve great things? That is what we discuss on this show. My name is Conrad Kakraba, and today we are going to have a guest who will be helping us through personal development for impact. But before then, we'll take a quick break. This show is sponsored by the Conrado Group. We are into personal development and then also educational services. If you are interested in learning abroad and you or maybe working abroad as a nurse and you want to take international exams such as the IELTS, the International English Language Testing System, or SAT, or TOEFL, or GRE, we are the right consultants for you to contact. And then also, if you are interested in multimedia uh, services, um, you have a show and you would like us to record it for you, the Conrado Multimedia Services does that. We are also sponsored by Heritage Christian University College. Heritage Christian University College is in Amasaman, right here in Accra, where Truth TV is, and we do undergraduate programs. We do master's degree programs as well. Uh, we are ruling them out. Uh, MSc in Accounting and Taxation, uh, Accounting and Finance, Banking and Finance, and Human Resource Development. We are also doing Bachelor of Nursing degree now, and we also have professional programs and media school programs. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back to continue. Do you have an interest and passion for the media? You see yourself excelling in the field of journalism and multimedia, but do not have enough time and funds to pursue courses in those fields. That is why the Heritage Christian College Media Training School was set up to give you an opportunity to train yourself for four months and get a two-month opportunity for attachment at Truth TV. With our state-of-the-art studio and newsroom, experienced friendly lecturers in the field of journalism and conducive lecture halls, we offer students the chance to learn on the job with both practical and theoretical lessons. We offer courses in journalism such as newscasting, show hosting, voice training and phonetics, voiceovers, report filing and many others. In the field of multimedia, we offer courses in cinematography, video editing, animations, studio management, master control room management, light and sound engineering, set design, graphic design, photography and social media management. We offer intensive one-week courses in communication essentials for professionals. We have both weekday and weekend courses. We are located behind Amasaman Stadium in Accra. Heritage Christian College Media Training School gives you all the tips you need to succeed in the world of communication. Thank you so much for staying with us. This is the Conrado Show where we talk about purpose, passion, and power. Today, I am blessed to host somebody that I've admired from afar for so long, and he is in the person of Ernest Chipoje. He's a coach and an author on, the, on leadership. He's an author of the book, A Life Beyond the Ordinary, and then also this book that I'm reading, uh, Minerals for the Mind. And another one that he's working on uh, pretty shortly, he will launch it as well. He's the founder of Nalike Africa, right? Yeah, yeah Nalike Africa, an NGO that trains about 500 youth from different parts of the world every month on leadership and personal development themes. He's a columnist on Ghana Web, Modern Ghana, and also blogs at uh, chifojnest.com with over 100,000 reads. As a speaker, he delivers messages across the country from high schools to tertiary institutions, churches, and corporate organizations. 
He holds a BSc in real estate from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Ghana, and did his postgraduate studies in built environment from Anand National University in India. He's a local pathway fellow at UN Development Solutions Network Youth in uh, 2020. Okay, thank you so much for joining me, Ernest. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure having you. And I've always been wanting to host you today. There is this chance for me to interact with you. So let's start with your name. What does Chifoja mean? Well, my literally my name Chifoja means mm -hmm. that she means water. Water. Therefore means beat. Okay. And then Jem means salt. That's Ewe, right? That's a word. Okay. So the literal meaning is water beat salt. Okay. But the deeper meaning is, if you look at it from another angle, mm. when water is beating salt, you can know that shea butter will be laughing at the salt because the salt will be melting. Forgetting that the sun will soon rise again and the shea butter will be melting and the salt will be hardening. Ah. So literally, it means that you have to always stay humble. Okay. And know that no condition is permanent, basically. Interesting. So that's what your name means. <laughs> Chief Oje. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So now tell me a bit about you. Who are you? Yeah, so... Apart from all the nice things I've read. Now let's talk about a human being. <laughs> yeah? Uh -huh. So who are you? All the nice thing you've said <laughs> is me. <laughs> basically, I'm an author, a real estate professional, mm. a leadership coach. Mm. I also run a social organization, which is the Nalika Africa. It's okay. We focus on three thematic areas. That is personal leadership, mm. organizational leadership, and community leadership. Interesting. So basically, this is what I do yeah. for my life, and this is what I do for a living. Aside that, also I also work with um, Huawei Technologies. Huawei Technologies. Yes, as okay. As an administrative personnel and a facilities manager as well. Okay. Interesting. You're a big guy. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Now, so um, let's talk about your family background. Um, tell us a bit about your family. Yes. Yeah, so we are four. Okay. And I'm the second born, mm. and I have one sister. <laughs> yeah, so three boys, one girl. Okay. Yeah, so my father and my mother are still together for almost over 30 years, which is a pride to me because mm. they've shown us <laughs> the way to go, consistency is <laughs> and the value of marriage. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, so we are four. I'm the second born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm happy to be the second. No pressure. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm also the, also the second. Yes, no pressure. Yeah, <laughs> we take our position and then we are just there. Cool. Right. Yeah. And where did you school? Um, in terms of senior high school. Yes, yeah, so I went to Maoli Senior High School. Yeah. Yeah. At school. What 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 did you study? Oh, I did general arts. But okay. I majored in economics, government, e maths. Yeah. And okay. geography. Yeah, and then you went to Kenya State to read. Yes, in real estate. Okay. Um. So. When you finished, um, when did you finish actually? I finished Molly's. I finished no, Molly's. No, I mean, uh, can you see? Yeah, that was in 2017. Okay, okay, okay. And um, so after that, you did service where? National service. So, my national service, by the help of one lecturer, his name was Mr. Zinzi, I quite remember. Mm. During the last, I was supposed to leave school the next day. Mm -hmm. So, that last day that I was submitting my thesis. Yeah. I went to my project supervisor's office and he shares the office with our HOD, yeah. Mr. Zinzia Ite. And mm -hmm. he saw me and he was like, he has never seen me before. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I was like, but you've been teaching me for so many years, yeah. close to four years. I see. And then he was like, oh, okay. He checked through the list and yeah. he saw my GP. I was like, oh, I'm a very good student. Oh, you are. And I, was, <laughs> I, my number down yeah. so I see. Write my number down and then. That time, that was in 2017, UT Properties was very top in terms yeah, of yeah, real estate. Yeah. So then they linked me there. Okay. And from there, I was posted to Huawei Technologies. Oh, okay. And so basically, that's how come I was able to get there. I see. So the value of network. <laughs> and good teachers around. Yeah, yeah. So so you did your service at at um, UT Properties. Yes. Okay. And then later on. Posted to Oh, okay. Posted to. I mean, you are making it look like government posting. No, no. <laughs> yeah. So. Went to Huawei. <laughs> Better. Yeah. And and that too was as a result of the fact that you were uh, close to that same lecturer or who? 
Yeah, because I could see that the lecture actually paved the way for me. I see. And the rest was based on individual performance. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And yeah. also by the grace of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. That's nice. So what what exactly um, changed your focus from uh, your mainstream job, which is real estate management and all of that, to personal development, leadership development and all of that? Well, I would say two experiences because mm. um, when I was growing up, I was a very curious guy. Mm -hmm. I like to find out why things are the way they are yeah. and why do things work the way they are. So mm -hmm. I remember when I was in class five, I used to school at the border tower Yeah. And anytime I go to school, my father used to give me like two teaspoons of honey. Okay. And then they mix it with lemon. So yeah. the... The mindset is that when you are taking that, it makes you brilliant. Oh, that was the perception. Or it helps your mind or something like yeah. that. But I remember one time I was going to the class and I saw a beehive. Yeah. Where bees are, mm -hmm. And they were making honey. And I was monitoring how it is being done. Mm. And I realized that a lot of bees were traveling to broken places, fire near, mm. going to flowers, gathering, you know, nectars and I bringing see. it there to make honey. But after the third term in class five, when I went to the same spot, I realized that some of the bees were on the ground. Mm, and dead, some were yeah. also hovering around the beehive that was destroyed mm. because somebody came there, took all the honey out. Yeah. And at that point, that experience taught me something huge on personal development mm. because the whole idea of the bee was to make honey. Yeah. That was the main focus. So they travel far and near to wherever to get nectar and do that. Mm -hmm. But in the process, they lost everything. And so it's it's dawned on me that mm -hmm. what am I creating? Yeah. If a bee can spend almost its entire life, maybe okay. four, five, six months yeah. making honey, yeah. what am I also doing for myself? I see. So then that placed me on a journey of developing myself to be of value. I because see. another aspect of my experience was that when they took the bee, you can realize that the people who actually destroyed the beehive cannot even make the, the honey. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But they took it away. Sure. But that doesn't, you can take, you can take the results, but you can't take the process. Yeah. And that was something that also stood out for me. So it made me understand that in order for me to be a person of value, I need to go through the process. Yeah. And it may take years, months, and stuff like that. Yeah. So then I was able to, you know, manage through that. Mm. So just like the scenario of the bee, which was vividly something I could remember, mm. I took it on my I took it upon myself yeah. that as an upcoming person, yeah. it's important for me to understand that I need to create my own value. And mm. even if by the end of my life or by the end of what I can give to the world, sure. God should call me home at least. Yeah. I've been able to also give sweetness to people, ah. or add value to people, or, or give nectar to people. Awesome, yeah, awesome. So That's yeah. what the Conrado Show is about. Purpose, passion, and empower. You must recognize the fact that God created you for a purpose on earth, and you must not just you know exist and survive, but you must thrive and and realize that purpose, go through it, you know, and and really make sure that you are living it and, and use all the passion that you have within you, the power that God has given you, the connections and everything that you've got to serve, you know, mankind. And then you can leave empty and go back to your maker. Yeah, so I love that. Now, we'll talk more about that later. But uh, so I say... On a day-to-day -day basis, so tell me what exactly you do. On well, a day-to-day -day mm, basis, yeah. I spend, like, usually I wake up quite early, mm. like 3 a.m., sometimes 4 a.m., and, hey. and I spend it reading. Well, some of us are snoring, changing yeah. gears. <laughs> I spend it reading or oh, thinking yeah? of what to write because I wow. have this daily write-up that I normally send to my friends. Yeah, and also, I've been reading on your Facebook page. Yeah, so yeah. Sometimes. Oh, so you actually write them daily? I write them with my own hands and pen. Aha, uh -huh, because I was wondering. So it's not graphic like no, design. No, 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 no. Because I, I saw it that it's it's like a pen that was, but it looks well designed and yeah, that's the individuality that people come with. I always, so so is it that you use paper, yeah, like particular kind of paper? Yeah, just normal um, 
A4 sheets. But one when, when I started with the A4 sheets, I realized that people were taking the post that I write and they, they were cropping my name. Uh, so then I decided my friend decided to customize the paper for me. So I just write with pen. Oh. Yeah, yeah because I today I was actually observing and I, I wanted it's to ask you. Yeah. Yeah, I was saying, hey, do you have time to be designing all these things? <laughs> do you have to design every day? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That's that's great. It's on his Facebook page, um, Ernest Chief OJ. You yeah. can find all his daily write ups. Yeah, so do you do that and so then I spend the say 4 a.m. to let's say 7 30, mm -hmm. maybe reading and making notes. Mm -hmm. And also, I jump into the shower to prepare yeah. for work. Yeah. yeah, so in between my breaks, too, I used to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you are an avid reader. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. That we'll talk about more of that and uh, the inspiration behind your books that you've written. Okay, now, so, so you, how are you able to get clients for your personal development training, your leadership development training, and all of that? Inspire others who want to also do things that you you do. Well, what I would say is that um, people follow what I do mm -hmm. a lot and I've been consistent for so many years, mm -hmm. up to six to seven years now. Okay. And so a lot of people feel I have learned so much that I can also teach them. Mm -hmm. And so through that, I'm able to reach out to them through, let's say, developing um, kind of model, learning yeah. model, or training yeah. models for yeah. them. And organization-wise, too, people feel that some of the content that I share, mm. in case I'm able to train mm -hmm. their team members on that, they'll be able to achieve higher productivity. Yeah. So hence, they reach out to me in that yeah. regard. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I would say people reach out to me not because they like me, but because of what I can offer, <laughs> which is knowledge. Yeah. So I see. Sometimes it's like nobody, excuse me to say, yeah. It's like sometimes nobody waters certain mango trees, but once the fruit is ripe, people just go through stones at it to get some to eat. <laughs> so you realize that it's not if they like the ma mango tree. Yeah, a proverbial like guy, a very but proverbial. They like, <laughs> but they like what it produces. Yeah, I see. Exactly. Awesome. So, um, <laughs> are you trying to say you don't have any friends? Well, people like people me, don't like oh, you. I have friends too, but I'm just saying it in a, in a broader context because people reach out to me yeah. that I don't literally know. Okay. But it's because of maybe my works. That of course. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Your works speak for you. Right. And uh, it's a what? Uh, is it see somebody with what? What does the Bible say? That, you know, if you observe somebody with skill and, and a certain kind of talent, it says you will... The person is going to stand before kings, you know, and not mere men. And so, so I, I can see that. <laughs> That's how come you've you've made it to the Conrado show, yeah? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, because so it, to be a sure, movie. sure, sure. Because I also observed you from afar. When I was little, I used to watch you on GTV, and I admire you. Yeah, and I sometimes see. we watch with our parents sit around. Hey, like, what are we going to? Watch? You know, TV? yeah. So today we meet for the first time, and actually. I'm so excited. Yeah, and I'm and it's also because I observed you also from afar, and then read your posts and all of that. Checked your website, and I was like, this might be somebody I must talk to, and and I was excited that you know you've not disappointed. Right. <laughs> yeah. You. Now, so let's talk about Nalike Africa. What is it exactly? So Nalike Africa... Yes. What does Nalike mean? I mean, these are every names. And yes. so explain and let's, let's know so, why you chose so them. So na, na, Nalike can have different, you know, uh, meaning depending on how you are interpreting it. Yeah. It means established. It could mean rooted. Mm -hmm. So Nalike Africa, my mindset was that God should establish Africa. Okay. So then I decided to choose that name because I, I believe the vision is mm -hmm. to you know build people mm. who let us strengthen our continent yeah. and help it grow. Awesome. Yes. So what do you do through that organization? So through that organization, basically we do leadership training. Oh, it's through that organization that you right. do all the, your yes. other trainings. Okay, right. that's fine. Training, yes. So me as a person, maybe I'm a brand, but my organization is the training. Yeah, yes. awesome. So, but you mentioned something specifically about NGOs and yeah, you said that you focus on them because of something. Yeah, Man, I, tell me again. I strongly believe that the SDG goals that we are all pushing is for a common good, that is to make humanity better. Mm -hmm. But I realized that most NGOs, 
that's where the challenge is because most NGOs run on non-profits. Mm. So then the members that they work with usually, they don't usually pay them. Mm. So then they need extra motivation to keep doing what they are doing. So mm. then I feel Nalika Africa comes in there to actually give them some leadership training mm. so that at least they look at it beyond personal interest or short-term gain yeah. to a longer-term gain. Yeah. So then I decided to dedicate most like my life on that to train people to become better, mm. to achieve better results and to push the country forward. Awesome, awesome. How has it been for you for that in that particular organization? It's been very, very fulfilling mm. because fulfilling means what? Fulfilling you get a lot of money or you've been able to impact more lives. Or what exactly? Tell us what your fulfillment means. <laughs> is to see somebody grow. Mm. Is to see somebody develop. Yeah. And is to see somebody tell me that, or oh, maybe because of you, I was able to achieve this and that. And mm. that. Even if not because of me, maybe because of what I've read or where you showed me, yeah. or things you exposed me to, I was able to achieve this and that. Yeah. So then, mm. with my training, sometimes the outcomes are very, very, very like like fulfilling because some okay. people like what you shared i actually practice it and i achieve this yeah so then i realized that the best investment i can make is in people yeah awesome awesome do you do that alone no i have a team though okay they yeah, have a team i work with a team of five okay yeah but basically most of the trainings mm -hmm. i do them myself okay okay that's great now so how are you connected to bismarck tay <laughs> <laughs> Miss Mactis, my yeah. boss. I see. If Miss Mactis is listening to me, uh -huh. like I'm very happy knowing him. I it's, see. Yes, yes, yes. A pace setter mm -hmm. in, in the space of leadership. Mm -hmm. But I got to know him when I went to go for a program. Mm -hmm. And I think during the program, I he was in the audience. Yeah. And I was I was the speaker. Mm. And after I was done, mm -hmm. the man of God came and I was like the man who's sat in this chair mm. at that time you went out i didn't literally see him he said i'm um, so i'm connected to that man one or the other hey. so there was a light at where i was sitting to where he was hey. so then i should look for him for after, him really <laughs> after the program so i think after the program i reached out to him and i see i came to one of his program at school to say and okay. that was where we met and it, wow. it has been a fulfilling journey so far wow I from him. okay wow and so uh basically you you do personal development training as right. well then leadership training right okay now what exactly have you found to be the problem of we young people when it comes to personal development and then also leadership well um one of the main challenges is purpose mm. The reason why I would say purpose is um, I quite remember the first time I took my mom to the beach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. when I went to the beach, yeah. after some time, I realized that there was a fish that was thrown out okay. through the waves yeah. when we we're trying to get our feet wet. Yeah. So when I picked the fish, I realized that it was flapping in my arm, okay. struggling to survive free. Yeah. And I threw the fish into the sea. But after some time, it came back again. Mm. And then I took the fish again and I walked and threw it a little bit further. Yeah. And never came back again. But one experience at that point was that when the fish was in my arm, in my palm, mm. it was flapping, struggling. Yeah. But I asked myself, with the way the fish was struggling in my palm, supposedly I give the fish all the mansions in this world, mm. all the jewelry in this world all the money in this world, it will still not see the value because all that the fish needed mm -hmm. at that time was the right environment, yeah. which is water. Okay. And so I feel that most people in our dispensation mm -hmm. today, may, they may have a lot of achievement, mm. but most of it are not tied to purpose. So then they have achievements that continually deepen their internal wounds mm. and magnify their agonies. Mm. So I think um, if purpose is being captured by the youth of today, yeah. they wouldn't strive to amass what or achieve things for their personal gain. Okay. They will think of how to constantly add value to others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. And uh, do you think you've made some impact in that regard with the people that you have mentored or trained? Yeah, I would say yes, because 
I'm very intentional about what I do. Mm. And I'm very intentional about people's development and mm. even myself. Because mm. even I, I spend so many hours learning. Yeah. Yeah. I spend so many hours questioning. Yeah. I spend so many hours learning from people who mm. are ahead of me. So in that same light, I believe that what you know, you must share. Yeah. Unlike our typical educational setting, where yeah. if you're writing even an exam, you cover the yeah. book so that your friend doesn't even know what you're doing. Uh-huh, that yeah. same mindset is what a lot of people have in yeah. this world. That what they know, they say to be something that people should know. Yeah. But I feel what you know that has helped you, you should also share to others so that yeah. you can follow. And that's what I've been doing. And the feedback is amazing because people have shown it to me that mm. they've really grow or it has helped them in one way. Yeah. Great, great, great. So what would you say to young people who, uh, first of all, have not identified their purpose in life? And then secondly, if they've even identified the purpose, what should they do to develop themselves to the setting capacity or level that would help them to make the impacts that you were talking about? Yeah, so uh, one, I would say two things. Yeah. Well. Let me add another mm. one. <laughs> But the first one, I, I always like telling stories because yeah. I believe storytelling is Yeah, I, I, and I story. love that. Yes. Yeah, so there was a guy who went to his master mm-hmm. and he told his master that he has never seen a cow before. Mm. And the master was like, okay, he would describe what a cow is mm-hmm. and how it looks like. So the master said the cow is a docile animal, mm. very calm and whitish, and yeah. it produces some whitish yeah. milk, which is very sweet. Mm-hmm. So this guy was like, well, if that is the description of a cow, then yeah. the next day he will go into the village to go and look for a cow. Yeah. So he set off to go and look for a cow. When he went, he saw a drawing yeah. of what the master described on the wall. Mm-hmm. And then he saw another bucket full of whitish substance. So his mind yeah. was like, oh, that is the cow and that is the milk. So exactly. he drank what he saw in the bucket. Hey. Accidentally, they rushed him to the hospital mm. and he actually drank a paint. Yeah. And so he came back furious at his master and yeah. his master told him, it was like, oh, but you deceived me that mm. a cow produces milk and it's whitish. Mm. The master asked him one question. Mm-hmm. Did you milk the cow yourself? Oh. He said no. And the lesson here is that, mm-hmm. you know, half learning, mm. half truth is it's dangerous. A dangerous thing. So I think... Um, with the youth of today, they should question everything that they've been told. Mm. I think that is one way to knowing things that you are very good at. Okay. Because when you start questioning things that you've been told or things that you've not questioned, you yeah, start so aligning. Applying, applying critical thinking. Exactly. Inquiry. Your, and your daily yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. Because the more you question, the more you get answers. Yeah. And I yeah. think that is one key thing that the youth of today can, mm. can like look at in terms of their personal development. Mm-hmm. And the second thing too that I would say is that you need a good mentor. Sure. That's one thing. And I always say that in relation to pacing and leading. Mm. Pacing and leading in the sense that there was a woman who came back from work and saw her daughter lying on the ground. Mm-hmm. And the woman quickly ran to, towards her daughter. When she got there, the first thing she did was to lie beside her daughter. Mm. So the driver didn't understand why would the woman yeah. lie instead of shouting at the daughter and lifting yeah. the daughter. But later, when the daughter was able to recover and, mm. and she got back to her feet, the woman took her to the hospital and they realized that she was suffering from a disease that actually attacked her. And she has this temporary seizure that yeah. she can just be yeah. on the ground. Yeah. And so the leadership sense there is that mm. when you get somebody who can actually get to your position and understand your contest yeah. and help you rise, that is some then that you should actually, you know, cherish. Because a lot yeah. of times, when you get a mentor, that's what they do to a good mm. mentor. They pace and lead with you. Mm-hmm. They get to your level, understand where you are, and mm-hmm. then take you up. So I think you have to find a mentor yeah. and somebody who can guide you. Wow. Awesome. How much does it cost to be under your mentorship? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I think I can, I can be paid for my work. <laughs> but then I'm, I'm open. They, yeah. can, they can read my blog. And uh, that will help. Because <laughs> I offer most of the things I keep there. Yeah, awesome. That's great. That's great. Now, so um, let's talk about um, your blog. Um, so you're very active in blogging. And then um, um, you've, you've also been writing a lot. Right. Yeah, so... Um, <clears throat> Uh, they're calling for a break right now, but when we come back, I think we would talk a bit more about your 
your posts and then also your your book all right so we're having a conversation with ernest chifoje um rain has beaten uh, salt <laughs> we, we will be back after this break Christian College, offering world-class university education. Heritage Christian College, offering world-class university education. Heritage Christian College, offering world-class university education. Heritage Christian College, Heritage, Heritage, Heritage. Offering world-class university education. Heritage Christian College, offering world-class university education. Heritage Christian College. Heritage Christian College. Offering world class university education. Thank you so much for joining us. It's still the Conrad Show where we discuss issues of purpose, passion, and power. Today we are looking at pre preparing um, yourself you know, for personal development, for impact. And we are discussing this with Ernest Chifo J. And before we went on the break, I said, let's look at some of your writings, things you've been blogging on and, and then also putting them into books. And this is one of them that you just generously gave me a complimentary copy minerals for the mind minerals for the mind tell us about the book well so this book basically has to do with certain things that we need that would influence our thinking and that will shape our future mm. yes and you've so, got a lot of them and you've actually used um how to call them minerals yes. you said what so section one is about you and the other and you are using the mineral garnet. Garnet is a garnet to help you turn your visions into physical reality. And then uh, section two, you're talking about possessing the right man's mindset. And you're using the mineral kunzite. Is it proper? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it helps you hear messages from your heart and cultivates a feeling of unconditional love for others, for yourself and others. And then you go on and on. You have citrine. You know, you have bloodstone, Nine you have one. Yeah, ruby, you have uh, ametrine, you have sunstone, you have alexandrite, you have, you know, uh, emerald, and then you have diamond. These are all minerals. Why did you decide to focus on minerals? And I didn't know that they all have meaning, you know, the way you have twisted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think minerals because, you know, if you even look at the context of Africa, yeah. When we're growing up, they used to tell us you have a lot of minerals like gold, bauxite, and mm. stuff like that. But people don't know mm. the deeper meaning of how to connect with that. Yeah. So then I decided that, right, even though we have all this, we are still suffering as a country mm. and a continent in general. Mm -hmm. But then if you are able to understand minerals by deriving the real sense of it and connecting mm. it to our personal life, I think we can be able to develop yeah. as persons and as a country i always tell people that the most important government is self-government which is yourself mm. if you're able to govern yourself by nurturing your mind mm -hmm. and harnessing all the minerals that you have in there mm. you can be able to go far wow awesome and there are so many interesting things that i wish we had time to just discuss the book on its <laughs> own but uh, let me see the last section section 10 it says tying the pieces together and that's about diamond. Diamond encourages stepping up and stepping into your true power to be a force for good in the world. That is accepting and fulfilling your spiritual destiny. And he said, Diamond one is you are a masterpiece. The wisdom in the porter's house and the networking thrives on service. And then the end of all arguments are results. Right. Hi, um, highlight on these. And let me, let me see. It, it sums up the whole book to me. Yeah, yeah, so I think mm -hmm. even the favorite chapter mm. was the last one. Yeah, uh huh. And, and 
networking is mm. very important because I got an inspiration from the Redwood. I don't know if you're familiar with the Redwood. It's one of the most historic trees in the world. Mm. That is very, very tall. And they live for so many years, up to even over 100 years. Mm. And the research I did shows that Redwoods, anytime they are growing, they tie their roots with the younger roots, mm. the younger Redwoods, so mm-hmm. that they become strong. In terms of storm, fire, I was breaking it, they are able to stay together. Really? So then that gave me the mindset Idea, that's yeah. like having the right connections mm-hmm. and relationship is the new currency of today. Mm. And so in spite of all that, yeah, you still have to show results because imagine preaching prosperity with no money, mm. preaching healing with no miracles. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so then the end of everything is mm. results. Mm-hmm. And once you have the results, I believe that you don't talk too much. Yeah. Your results speak for your, for itself yeah. and for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so the last chapter is my favorite. Because ah. the end of everything is results. Is that results? The end of everything I will say if I don't put them in the book. Yeah. I'm not done it because it can be lost. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the results is Yeah, it's there everything. to see. So I love that. I love that. And so minerals for the mine. How much do you sell it? Oh, it's 50 cities. Wow. Five dollars. Five dollars. Hey, you're making it look small with the dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but in Ghana money, it's That's a lot that. of money, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of money. But for me, the wisdom in this book, I mean, it's it's more than the 50 CDs or the $5. And so you should grab your copy. How do they get copies? Well, so you can get it on my website. Okay. Yeah, uh, G4JNS.com. You can buy it and it will be sent to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey. Wow. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Yeah, smart guy. Yeah. And Amazon too? Yeah, Amazon. You can get a soft copy. I see. Yeah. Awesome. I know they are twenty dollars. Huh? Oh no no no. Amazon is I think it's five dollars. Oh, just like you've yes, mentioned. Same. Wow. So you've just given me fifty Ghana cities for, for, for free. Oh no no no, I've not given you fifty Ghana. I've, I've literally given you four years of my learnings. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so privileged to have that. I'm so privileged to have that. And so so let's wrap up, but basically I want to ask you some uh, personal questions again. First of all, what did you wish you did when you were growing up? I mean, 10 years back or something. What What did you wish you had done? Yeah, yeah I I personally wish I had somebody who could guide my step, okay. like a mentor, mm. like somebody who has been to where I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was what I wasn't able to get. But yeah. The flip side is that mm. I learned a lot through pain. Yeah. Because yeah. it was full of try and error, yeah. and failures and stuff. Yeah. And when people are built from pain, yeah. they respond and act differently. I see. <laughs> yes. I see. But I strongly, that's the main reason why I dedicate most of my life to share what I know to people. Mm. But I don't want people to be. Go in that through the same. Pain. Yeah. And it's but the same with me as well. But yeah. when you're able to grow from pain. Yeah. You can turn your pain into purpose. Sure. So that is where you reach at a stage where you don't need, you know, a limelight. Yeah. You can light yourself up mm-hmm. because you've been through several trial and error learning and you've learned pain, you've paid the price. Yeah. Yeah. So I think most people coming up, they need good people around them, yeah. good network, good mentors. Yeah. People can actually show them the way. Awesome. And I think that's what I wish I knew. Yeah. About. And um, uh, what do you regret in life? Well, I regret, Most. I regret blaming my parents for some of my challenges. I see. In a sense that, you know, sometimes I feel I'm not being grateful enough or mm. I feel I'm a bit entitled because I feel my parents should have been at a certain level mm-hmm. or they should have done certain things. Yeah. But then you I actually told me something yeah. that I laughed at, you know, before we came on set. Is that you wish your parents mentioned that part? Well, I said they should have taken their last bath. <laughs> I they came post Castellan. <laughs> yeah, he they said I'm taking them to Europe. You know, <laughs> yeah, like you know, you wish that the, the last ship that was yeah, taking yeah. the slaves away, yeah, they should have joined that. But that, but that raises the question is, as to whether is the blessing a place or the blessing is a person. And I okay, re- and I realized that sometimes the blessing can be both. Yeah, that is the place and the person. But yeah, in most of us. So this nature, nurture, and and all of those arguments, you know. <laughs> so 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 you can you can be in a certain place and be blessed as a result. 
You can be somewhere too, you may not get the blessings, and you can be someone or develop yourself from wherever it is and still be blessed. Okay, so so that's the that's the point you're trying to exactly. make. Interesting. So but so right now, what's your mindful? Uh, what, what's your mindset right now on on this aspect yeah, about well, blaming I, parents? Yeah, I realized <laughs> that I was being entitled, and also I was a little bit naive. Okay. In my like dealing with yeah, them. I wasn't dealing with them from a point of empathy. Yeah. I was dealing with them from a point of enti self entitlement. Yeah. And yeah. Then now I've learned and I've realized that life is very hard. Mm. To be frank, anybody who tells you life is easy is lying. They are not being truthful <laughs> because everybody has something they are fighting. Yeah. Struggles they are going through. Yeah. yeah. And things they cannot even share. Yeah. So and then, the, the, they've given you at least so education. For them to be able to give me good education. Yeah. I think I'm forever indebted to, to them. That. And also I'm forever grateful because yeah. the price they've paid despite yeah. their own personal struggles. Yeah. Yeah. They've shown me grace, and I think everybody deserves grace. Yeah, yeah. great, great, great. And so, uh, what what would you say, um, young people should be doing with our educational system that you've been through? What should we be doing when we are in school, young people, especially, you know, from JSS, senior high school, you know, that sort of thing, university? What should young people be doing? I think looking at our educational system, which our educational system yeah. is not really training us for the world. Mm. And you've been to India, and yeah. I mean, I was in India. Is it 2014 or so? And I saw a difference in the way they approach life and living it, and technology and all of that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so, share your experience. For me, when I went, when I was doing my postgraduate studies, yeah, one thing that stood out for me is that every week. At least three times, I have a presentation to make till I complete it. Awesome. So it gave me the platform to be able to learn how to communicate, mm. how mm. to, you know, put my ideas yeah. together. Yeah. But then in our context, like most schools, mm. they don't actually, it, KNUST, sorry to say, mm. I remember I can count the number of times I did presentation, mm. like three or four throughout my four years. Mm. So then how do you build people who can be able to, you know, stand on stage, mm. communicate their mm -hmm. ideas? Mm believe in what they are saying yeah. and that's not to blame them because you cannot when you are dealing with an enemy you don't have to lose that of your humanity mm. but that's to say something that has been passed on mm. so i think that the young people if you go to school spend 80 percent of your time knowing people mm -hmm. and learning human skills mm. how to how to interpersonal talk, relationship how communication to communicate with yeah people, how, so Involve yourself in various clubs. Mm. Like if there's any position, try yeah. and volunteer. Yeah. And you know, learn those skills because mm. this are what defines you, not really those big big grammar mm. or this mm. big big mm. story. As you can see, our forefathers, like I used to tell people, yeah. they were in black suits yeah. fighting for our freedom, yeah. fighting for good services, yeah. good will. But now we have some of our leaders, excuse me to mm. say, with this flamboyant dress, mm. big, big shirts. And what mm. they do is that they hide under all this and to still meet us. Mm. And that tells us that the kind of education that they have had mm. could possibly be something that didn't connect with human beings. I see. <laughs> it's I more see. about theory and personal, <laughs> you know. Enrichment. Yeah. So, so we should our, our, our change education our should mindset. Be more about mm. Connecting to people, learning okay. human skills, and mm. thinking of how to make people around you better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you went to um, India, you said, what program did you study? Built environment. What is that? So the built environment is a holistic approach in the architecture design. So it has a little bit to do with all the things that constitute architecture design. So planning, building, basically. Planning, okay. So a little bit. So it's okay. the built environment. Yeah. I so see. We touch on very mobility, transportation. Yeah. yeah. But interestingly, I would say 60% of the courses was more human really? skills. Really? <laughs> yes. I see. Because, because everything is being built for the nobody, human. Nobody cares about your technical skills if you are not able to connect human. Mm. Yeah, so I think that was something the that focus, really yeah. caught my attention. I see. Unlike our educational system where it is being graded on those who can memorize yeah. and recite, yeah. not those who can think and act. Mm. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I also got... Uh, from I also I mean my master's was from from an Indian university, right. Sikkim Manipal University, and 
And also I went to one of the universities there as well for that kind of training, you know. And it also stood out, the fact that they were focusing on the, the human being right. and how you can unleash your potential. Uh, the technical skills, of course, you would learn them. But at the end of it all, how can you, who is the fulcrum of managing technology and all of those things, be able to act properly and make sure that things you know, are done in a certain way? So I really love that. And um, so maybe f finally, let me ask um, uh, at Huawei, who are we, where you're working, you know, uh, what, 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 how are some of those skills that you, you have learned, how is it helping you in what you do? Yeah, well, I think one, one of the big skills that has really helped me working in this um, multi international organization. Yeah is empathy oh. empathy because mm. you know these people um the chinese yeah they don't why well, is a chinese company mm. but they work with different people from different across parts the world mm. of the world mm. and different culture different mm -hmm. thinking different ways of doing things yeah but your ability to understand people from a point of empathy by removing your shoe before stepping into their shoe i see is something that's really helped me because the only way you understand what is in the shoe of your friend is to remove your own shoe first. I see. And what does that mean? So that means that you have to put yourself... And learn to relearn. Exactly. I and see. in between, you have to be switching. Because some people <laughs> are way, way different. So I think you're talking... You're, you're talking about some of us, our ability to... <laughs> the way you're saying the thing, like, it's so easy. You have to be switching in terms of what? You have to be switching in terms of how you look at things. Yeah, and how yeah. you think about perspectives. perspectives. There will be multiple perspectives, and and yeah. you have to be able to integrate them exactly. and synergize, synthesize yes. all those big yes. big terminologies. Exactly. I see. So, so how have you made it as a person? You know, working there for about six years. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. How have you made it? You, you said you are in charge of what? I do facilities management and also administrative specialist. Yeah, for them. So I do it people every day yeah 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 and is that your headquarters yeah that's their headquarters for west africa for west africa wow you're not a small guy <laughs> 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 and you're my friend <laughs> anyway that's fine so basically um it's pulling let, let's tie all the pieces together <laughs> as you wrote in your book yeah so the key things you know maybe from your book i should i should tie all those pieces together the first one, you know, it says um, you and the other. That's about networking, right? And then possessing the right mindset. That's the second part. And then also unique in a non-unique environment. What's that? You didn't tell me about that. That's, you know, growing from hard situations. Okay. The pain and all. Okay. And then a purposeful, confident faith. What's the role of faith in all these you're talking about? Without faith, you cannot move mountains. Ah, I see. I Just see. Like in the Bible, you need yeah. faith to act. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes the faith must come from you. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. a borrowed faith. Yeah. The word yeah. you believe about yourself. Yeah, so, okay. Awesome. And then outgrowing doubt and then facing failure. Yeah. What, what, what's that? Outgrowing doubt and then facing failure. What, what would you say about sometimes that? Sometimes some people have, you know, built around without you have been told several times what you cannot do yeah yeah but the moment you're able to discover yourself you can break out of that you yeah outgrow that yeah and face your fears yeah right i love that and then section six is monumental facts of life okay so these are different become the best for the world your deeds are your monuments and open what you have received then the facts of life then rainbow in the cloud what's that <laughs> at least let's add a little sunshine to people's life let's make life easy for people mm. i always tell people that making life easy for your friend mm. or your brother mm. is an act of love yeah i i see so be a rainbow in people's cloud oh give them hope great 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 you sound like a preacher <laughs> then You're peace one. oh hallelujah i'm praying for you <laughs> peace within yeah what's that peace within basically mm. that when you go to the sea yeah or you're standing on the shores and you see the sea. When you see the waves coming, you see how chaos it is mm. on the surface. Yeah. Or when you go deep down, when you watch documentary, yeah. And you go deep down, the sea is very calm. 
Yeah. So always let's reach out for deeper things. I see. Not things on the surface. And that's Ish. it's at the deeper level that there's peace. Wow. So it's we those who make a lot of noise, we are on the surface. Oh. Eh? <laughs> Empty barrels. <laughs> Oh, no, are you oh, trying to say that we, we don't make a lot of noise? It's like it's like when you are truly happy about something, you don't even post it on social media. Hey. You don't need to tell people you are happy. Or oh, am I lying? Hey. Now social happy, media is where to advertise your happiness. So. <laughs> well, in business sense. Yeah, well, that's also true. Yeah, I love that bit. And then religion off the rails. What's that? Religion without conscience, where is your God? My only religion is love and be kind to yourself. What were you trying to draw well, attention to? It's an experience I had in church where my father wasn't able to afford our attire. Yeah. And then an elder from the church actually asked us to remove it on one faithful Sunday. I don't understand. He wasn't able to afford. So the elder was a tailor. Rules actually gave us a dress to wear, my brother and I. Uh-huh. When we were in Sunday school, right? So uh -huh. my father wasn't able to pay, pay, uh, pay off. He needed an extra time. So this yeah. man actually came to the Sunday school and asked us to start taking off the shirt. Hey, and what an embarrassment. That had an impression of yeah, about religion, religion and religion how people people. treat people. Yeah, so then, even at church. <laughs> church. Oh, I, I see. Like God is not a man. Mm. And so we shouldn't do things to please man, thinking we are pleasing God. Mm. You have to face your God. Yeah, you God for yourself. I see. I always tell people that God is in every man. Mm. It's up to every man to be in God. Mm. Right. So, are, we have started being philosophical. Oh, let's no, no, let's no, no, end no. the show, okay? <laughs> <laughs> let's end the show. <laughs> let's end the show. These philosophies, <laughs> we are not ready for them yet. We will have a second part on religion, <laughs> religion and philosophy. Well, that's and, my so yeah, nice of course, that's it. Of course, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much, Ernest. It's been awesome having you on the show. I've loved, you know, every statement that you've made. <laughs> it's been proverbial, like, you know, very witty, very sensible and thought-provoking. And you're speaking it so effortlessly as if you memorize them to come and see it on the show. But I can see that it's part of you. And that's that's a wisdom. That's why you have minerals for the mind. You know that <laughs> Yeah. The next book you're writing is on something ordinary. Oh no. Yeah, it's sky. Yeah. I can't wait to read that book. Where has it reached now? How much will it cost? So that I start looking for money to buy one. Oh, it will be it will be like Hundred cities. Hey, <laughs> the thing has not. You, you are counting your is it chicken before they are hatched? Because, because that book is for go getters. Hey, it's so, not for some so of us. <laughs> we shouldn't even come close. <laughs> people really want to touch the sky. Wow. They believe in the impossibility. This guy is talking big on my show. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I love that. I love that. And and so. He said, "Until I touch the sky, or what's the? That's the title. Yes. Until I touch the sky, I will. When is it set to to be released? Yeah, this year. But I'm yet to. Okay, finalize yes. it. Be fast. Be fast. Be fast. The year right. <laughs> we are not seeing top in the year. So we better bring it so that we can yeah, <laughs> reposition yeah. our minds for 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 touching the sky. Yeah. So this has been the Conrado Show, where we talk about purpose." passion and power and Ernest <laughs> epitomizes all of these three purpose he has discovered his purpose in life the fact that he needs to use up all the talents and the skills that God has given him as a real estate uh, something something professional author you know leadership coach you know personal development coach and all of that he is using all of those to the benefit of others and so purpose is very key. You've got to discover your purpose. And if you've not been able to, get in touch with me and then I'd help you because that's also what my journey is, to help others to discover their purpose because you need to. When I discovered mine, I mean, everything started falling in its proper place. If you haven't, your life will just be a mess. You will just be living life just to, you're just going through the motions, you know, but you're not actually focusing on anything. You're not, you know, making any impact anywhere. 
and nobody really feels that you know you you actually <laughs> are alive you need to show that you are alive because you know your purpose and you're living it out with passion and that's the second part of it the fact that you know you must not just go through life just anyhow just survive you know no you must thrive you must live it with some with some passion with with some with some um, energy and also let everybody feel that indeed when you wake up your waking up was important it was significant and you 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 don't just wake up for to come and worry the world and then finally there is power that god has given everybody to achieve the reason he created everyone and so tap into that power the power of god the power within your own self, as Ennis has alluded to, and then also the power of others, you know, the connections that we need to build, the networks, because you can't do it alone. You are not an island. The world is for people who are able to connect and build relationships and also take advantage of wherever they are to shoot up to the sky. And so that is what we would love to help you to do on this particular show. If you want to have a conversation around this, just hit me on 020-67-3038-2 and we can have more discussions on your life. I can share mine with you and in the process, you can also see yourself in me. And also, we can assist you if you want to travel abroad and you want to take exams that are required, such as the IELTS exam you know, the International English Language Testing System. Maybe your, uh, your place of, of success would be <laughs> somewhere outside Ghana and you would need to take some exams that are required. Have a conversation with us as well. And then also, if you need um, to come to university in Ghana, um, Heritage Christian University College is the place we are recommending for you. Uh, we have... The wonderful courses here. We are accredited by GTEC, the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, and then also we are affiliated to KNUST and UCC. And uh, we have wonderful undergraduate courses and also uh, master's degree courses that we are rolling out. And we have IT short courses and media short courses as well, and professional courses uh, that you can also take to make you a chartered uh, professional. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.